Uh, okay, cool, man. Uh, so, listen, man. How did you get started uh, with online marketing, and you know how far have you come since then? You know, can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, sure. Yeah, when I started, um, I started. I was a twenty-year-old, very young twenty-year-old. I actually used to be a preacher. Um, I was a street preacher and different things like that. And uh, I was a magician also. And so, as a magician, I was like trying to get different bookings, different shows, and stuff like that. And uh, in the old Magic Magazine, which is our geeky way of having our own magazine as magicians, um, there was an ad by this Dave D guy who I believe now works with Joe Polish. I believe he works with him. Um, I'm not sure though. And he, he had this course that was like, okay, you know, follow this course and you'll get 30 bookings instead of five. I was like, okay, we'll try it out. And it was like 200 bucks and I got that. Um, and then I started building websites for my magic business to get more sales and things like that. Uh, people started asking me, hey, can you build us a website? Can you build us a website? So I started doing that as well. Um, and then we came across uh, one of the companies my brother worked for was a little local cigar company. And uh, they wanted a website. So I was like, yeah, you know, we'll do this. It's like 3500 bucks, And I built it. And then um, I was like, hey, do you want to try out this, you know, search engine ranking stuff? And back then it was like Lycos and Hotbot and AOL, and those were the guys you tried to rank on. Um, and it was easy. It was like basically have the word on your site and you'll rank. And uh, so I noticed, hey, these guys are getting ranked a lot. And I was able to sell the site for like 10 grand, which for a 20-year-old kid, it was like, dude, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's great. It's like, I'll take it. Um, and so I started doing things like that. Uh, we got pregnant with our first kid, and I was struggling. You know, it was like four grand a month was like a good month for me. Um, and so I, I started building more sites and doing more stuff. Um, I went on PayPal in the PayPal shops, and I just started emailing everyone in a category. So I'd be like, hey, you know what? You're on PayPal, and you sell, sell magic tricks. I'm going to help you get more people to your magic site. And then, you know, I'd be like, well, PayPal me 500 bucks, and I'll build your site. Bam. It's just, you know, easy. Wow. I'd, I'd mail 10 people, I'd get three calls, and I'd close like two of them. <laughs> um, and so I did that, and then I got into um, Herbalife marketing for all the Herbalife guys. Uh, I had created a CD that I basically scanned the entire, entire Herbalife catalog. And because PayPal's variable was based on an email address, I could be like, okay, well, what's your email? Cam at cam.com. Bam. In click of a button, you would have an entire PayPal ready catalog CD. And so I did that. Um, and then I just uh, got into search engine ranking, uh, which I sold as a service. And in 03, when I was doing the search engine ranking, I came um, across uh, Frank Kern as a client. And he's like, dude, if you're doing all these search engine rankings, you know, and he, he had me do rankings for that parrot site that everyone knows about. <laughs> That's and, crazy, man. He was I didn't like, know that. I did not yeah, know that. And we got him rankings. It's like, dude, I am selling a ton of these parrot books, and it's crazy. <laughs> and he's like, dude, Marcus, if you can get these rankings, why don't you do, you know, affiliate marketing? I was like, okay. So I set up some sites. I did one for, like, a cable TV thing and one for, ah, what was it? Oh, yeah, I had to, get, like, find out if your ex is cheating, you know, big click. Um, and I set those up and I went on vacation and I like came back to like 1200 bucks. I'm like, dude, I didn't have to sell a guy. I didn't have to worry about, you know, is he going to know that the rankings are even valuable or anything? It was like, bam, there we go. And so I started doing that. Uh, we did a lot with SEO, uh, ranking, things like that. Um, I've never been really big on the heavy duty SEO stuff. Like in terms of, you know, backlinks and all these fancy things. I, I'm more like, you know, let's find a word that no one else is ranking for, no one cares about. Let's rank for that and do it right. And, you know, it worked like a charm. Like instead of going for spyware, I would go for like error code 60509.exe. Nice. You know, it's like, well, shoot, the guy looking up spyware, he's like sitting there and he's like, well, what program do I want? <laughs> The guy with like 609 error, I'm like, hey, you got 609 error? This fixes it. Oh, well, yeah, I'll buy it. You know, and it was just an easy sell. Um, and we did things like that. Um, then I got into the smiley faces. 
which uh, a lot of people who, who know my stuff know about those. I uh, set up a site. I found out people were looking up, you know, downloadable happy faces, emoticons, um, or whatever you call them. And um, the company was paying at the time 70 cents a download. Wow. And I was like, dude, 70 cents a download. Holy <laughs> cow. It's a free smiley. 70 cents. All I got to do is get people looking for happy faces to the smiley site. Bam. Uh, my first year doing that, we gave away a thousand downloads, which pocketed me like seventy grand. And I felt like I wasn't—I felt like I was cheating. I was like, "Dude, I'm not." Working. <laughs> <That's it." laughs> um, and it was—it was just super easy. And so I did that. And then in 2005, I came across the word that was getting a lot of traffic, which was MySpace. And I was like, "I hate." I, like still to this day, I hate social media. I mean, it's a necessary evil, but it's like Facebook. I mean, half the time I don't check it. Um, you know, and, and Twitter, I just I'm not the guy who's like, look at my salad. You know, um, which is cool. I mean, for some people, it, that's cool. It works. Um, not for me. Yeah. So I found the MySpace, and I was like, okay, this is getting a lot of traffic. Um, and that's all I care about. Like if people start looking up, you know, my shoe won't fit and it's like the number one looked up thing, that's where I go. Uh, even though other marketers say, hey, there's no money there, I'm like, well, I'm sure Zappos would beg to differ. <laughs> you know, sell a lot of shoes to those people. Um, and so the same thing happened with the MySpace. I was like, okay, a lot of people looking this up. And at that time, they wanted to pimp their MySpace page, <laughs> which is like, the fancy way of saying make it cool. And again, I could care less about it, but I was like, smiley faces, I think they'd like them. So they put smiley faces on their MySpace, bam, we went from like, I put the site up the next day, it was 300 a day in profit just overnight. Um, and it was really cool, I was, I was doing that. We built it up to like 1,000 a day. Um, and then Google did their stuff and they were like, well, you know, you can't have a website. I mean, that's preposterous. <laughs> And so we got Google Slap, um, and I was like, okay, well, let's try it on pay-per-click. And I tried it on pay-per-click, and it was absurd. I mean, it was like uh, $4,500 days were just June, 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 June. Wow. And it, I wasn't selling anything. Um, and it was smiley faces. We had, like, the little mouse cursors. They could change it to, like, a puppy paw or, like, a football or whatever. Um, and, you know, it worked. It made money. Um, MySpace dwindled, so it's not as big now, uh, but there's still a lot of money in the market. Um, again, the key is just being creative. You know, like most people would say, well, MySpace, that's not a buyer market. And they would miss out on it. Or they'd say, you know, Easter e-cards, not a buyer market. Well, you know, these companies will do lots of things. Um, it's kind of like the people who, you know, they look at it and they're like, well, I don't want to go in the foreclosure market because all those people are broke. They're foreclosing. <laughs> It's like, yeah, but the banks have high rises, so someone's making money, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing is just thinking outside the box, thinking how can I take someone, whether it's as simple as, hey, I want to make my MySpace cool, here's some smileys, or whether it's complicated like, hey, here's a creative way to get a loan um, or something like that.